Welcome to Go After Dark. Welcome to Go After Dark. This is a series where we relax and code some nice graphical effects. In this episode, we'll create a tiling image scaler. Uh, some of the concepts we'll introduce here will be some that we'll use in later episodes. So I hope you'll enjoy. Let's go through and look at the changes that are needed to make this work. So the um, start of the function looks pretty much the same. We have initialization and we run the effect. Uh, if we uh, look at the effect, we again load a picture just like, like last episode. A change from last time is that we require the image to be a power of 2, which is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 16, and so on, because that allows us to do some tricks in how we uh, we address the um, the individual pixels in the, uh, in the image. So what we do is that we calculate the power of 2, uh, and we check that it is actually an exact power of 2 and store these values in, in our effect. One of the ways that can uh, be helpful is um, that you c then have separate pieces of your of an uh, integer offset being the uh, the x and the y coordinate. You can hard code these values, say require the texture to be a very specific number, like 256 or whatever, so, so you can always uh, do that lookup very fast. Uh, for now though, we want to, to keep it flexible, so we calculate the, uh, the power of two and, and store that for, for later use. Other than that, things look pretty much um, as last time. We create a drawing surface and we we split the uh, output lines on uh, into a slice of uh, of byte slices. Before we move on to rendering the actual image, I want to introduce a, a concept called fixed point arithmetic. I will keep it as a separate section, so if you already know everything about it, you can just skip that section. So let's move on to that. So what is fixed point arithmetic? Basically, what you do is you, uh, you take an integer and you split the bits into a fractional part and an integer part basically creating a decimal point uh, number out of your integer. So in this, we'll take a look where we have a fraction of eight, meaning we've, we've dedicated eight bits to the fractional part, and we have eight uh, bits for the, uh, for the integer part. So if they're all zero, then both the uh, integer part and the fractional part is zero, meaning we have a value of 0.0. .0. So if we uh, if we add value one to the to the lower part, we basically say since we have eight bytes here, we have two fifty six as as the uh, fractional resolution. Um, then every time we add one to this part, we uh, we add a a one two fifty sixth to our value. So if we add a one to the uh, to the other eight bits, we we simply get a one out when we can uh, convert it back. If we uh, add two fifty five, we have two fifty five. And again, if you then add to the to the the lower part, it gets added to the to the upper part. Pretty simple. So converting from it is basically taking an integer of the value times two fifty six. If we want to convert back, we pretty much do the uh, the opposite. Or converting back, we we can do a simpler version where we instead of dividing, we use a multiplication. But in 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 essence, this is how you convert back and forth to fixed point from float. 
to get the uh, the integer or the fractional part out, we can simply use and masks to to get out the uh, the values that we require for that. So if we uh, end out the the lower part, we we get the fraction. If we take out the upper part, we get the the integer, and we can then shift them down so they get proper the proper integer part. But it's on, only a bit operations, so it's very very fast. Adding numbers is very simple. You just add these uh, numbers as uh, ordinary uh, numbers. So if both of these are uh, u and 16, you just add them and you get the correct result, including the fraction part of it. So of course, uh, overflow still applies in the in the same way as it uh, as you'd expect. But it's very very easy. Same for subtraction works um, works very well if you assume it's unsigned um, then you have to care about underflows but it's not different than any other integer operation multiply is a bit more complex than adding and subtracting since it requires you to shift out the uh, extra fraction you uh, you get uh, but the uh, intermediate result and uh, the the output is uh, with the same precision as uh, as you'd expect. However, you do need your intermediate value to uh, be able to hold double the uh, the the number of bits. So if you have uh, two 16-bit numbers as as we have uh, here, you, the intermediate result should be 32-bit. Otherwise, we uh, we will lose precision on this. So the division operation is the opposite, of course, of uh, what the multiplication is. So, uh, so what we do is we take our, our input value and we shift it up by our fraction. Um, so, um, and of course, this this must also have extra space to contain the uh, the extra values uh, before we divide it. But other than that, it works similarly to, to uh, what you'd expect. Um, a thing is, if you divide by constant, you should try to use multi multiplication instead. That's a good general rule. Uh, but it also applies here. You can, can simply do multiplication by, uh, by the fraction you want to divide by. Uh, it's the same as uh, as any other typical operation. Of course, uh, precision is uh, is not 100% on these types of operations, but uh, should be. Um, it will work in in most cases. You can use the same uh, integer tricks as you uh, are used to, meaning you can you can use shifts to divide or multiply by a power of two. Uh, you can mix and match different uh, fixed point precisions. Um, of course, getting the correct output and what you get is is tricky. But there's no nothing stopping you from uh, from uh, using a uh, a five bit with a, a thirteen bit precision fixed point value. Basically, you just have to be sure that you shift by the right amount to get the results you uh, you want, and and you have to shift them up and down to to add and, and subtract them. Rounding behaves uh, similar to what you'd expect with integers, uh, so it always rounds down to, downwards towards zero. If we look at an example where we divide two fifty five by two fifty six. We have uh, the uh, 255 in A, we shift it down 8 to divide by 256, we get 0. That's the same as uh, with the with integers. To make it round uh, up or down, we can add half of uh, what we're dividing by. So uh, if uh, we're dividing by 256, we add uh, 128 before we do the, um, the shift, that will make it so that, that A will round up and down uh, as, uh, as we'd expect when we are dividing by 256. So yeah, that's, um, that's it for, uh, for the fixed point introduction. You'll see a lot of it in, uh, in things going forward. So I think it's important that we get this down 
to uh, to start off. So let's take a look at how we uh, use all the knowledge we've gained to uh, create our scalar. So I've taken out the uh, the image that we'll be scaling, and what we'll uh, we'll do is that we'll represent um, the uh, width and uh, the height position that we want to output as a fixed point number. So um, the way we uh, we do that is we uh, we want uh, let's say 16 bits of uh, of precision for uh, for that so we keep these as constant we then uh, based on our time value we create a zoom level uh, i square the number because it makes the zoom go a bit more smooth so basically uh, what this means is that we have how many pixels we uh, we want to skip on on each uh, iteration as this number we then create a mask for the x and y coordinates uh, of the uh, of the image uh, that enables us to uh, to quickly get out the coordinate pair we want then we choose the center of uh, where on the screen we want to zoom in and out of. We, add, we create values x0, y0. That is the, um, the offset at the top left pixel we, uh, we want to draw. To do that, we also need to add where on the source image we want to start. I've selected some uh, points uh, simply by looking at the image and figuring out some coordinates I, I liked. We add that to uh, to our offset. What we then do is we simply loop over the output image. Uh, remember, this is the uh, the output image that we are drawing to. Uh, we then figure out where in the uh, y coordinate uh, we are on the input image because that will be for every line we draw that will be the same so we don't need to to recalculate that every time so what we do is we take the offset we take our current y coordinate we uh, multiply that by the uh, current zoom factor we uh, we have then we uh, shift it down so we eliminate the fractional part and we use that and we we then mask out the y coordinate so we only have the uh, y coordinate in SRC y. Uh, what we then do is we offset the uh, y coordinates uh, down to the to the actual uh, place we want to start. So on the first pixel of the uh, of the line where we want to uh, to read from. Then we uh, we range uh, horizontally. So we start at the leftmost pixel on the, on our image. Uh, we do the same where we uh, we take the uh, x coordinate and multiply it by the number of steps we want to take, and we take out non-fractional part. So basically, we have the the integer part left, and we end it with the uh, with the x mask. So that means we have a pretty simple lookup where we simply add the y offset and the x offset, and read from that and we store that in the output um, of what we're drawing. So let's take a look at uh, how this looks in practice. There we go. Nice, smooth zoom. So uh, if we look further in we uh, get nice big pixels because uh, we're not skipping an entire pixel every time we uh, we move by one in the x or y direction uh, and when we get further out we uh, we can see that it simply moves on to the uh, to the next to, to the next image um, and also they are not uh, exact copies because we have we do have sub-pixel precision, but obviously, since there's no anti-aliasing or 
or filtering going on, we get some some pretty pretty nasty effects when uh, when it gets uh, small, but it does the job as we'd uh, pretty much expect. So yeah, that's uh, that's how we do uh, an image scaler. Uh, so you can see once we've figured out where to start and uh, masks for all kinds of things, it's actually pretty uh, pretty easy to uh, to do. Um, don't have to do uh, do much. We have a very very simple loop where the inner loop is uh, is an addition, a multiplication, a shift, and an and, and a lookup into the uh, to the source image. So pretty fast. Um, yeah, fifteen, twelve. Yeah, pretty fast. Um, anyway, in the next episode, we'll also look at how we can avoid these uh, multiplications. Some of you can probably already figure it out, but for now, this is uh, good enough. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Um, feel free to play around with it and uh, maybe do your, your own versions of this. So thank you for watching the second episode of Go After Dark. You can visit afterdark.klauspost.com and uh, watch the uh, effects live in your browser. You can also find links to the code and other things in the description below. Be sure to follow and subscribe on uh, YouTube and Twitter so you get notified when new episodes come out. Feel free to share your own creations on Twitter with the hashtag GoAfterDark. But that's it for now. Thank you and good night.